These duo cards are really interesting to me, but I feel like we miss a lot of story. So I feel like as well, <laughs> it will be very interesting to dive a little deeper into why these guys are all paired together because some of them aren't logical and some of them are in some ways and with some of them I might need some help. <laughs> Starting with maybe an obvious one where we have Baral and Kairi Zev with Ragavan in the background here. Some people uh, did point this uh, uh, out that he wasn't there but he is. Uh, they're just all probably fighting together somewhere off screen. Um, but these guys are logical in the sense that they are enemies. Uh, well, <laughs> so yeah, not really logical for them to fight together, but of course they are fighting for a common cause. So that is kind of the joke here. These are some people that you wouldn't expect to see fighting together. Um, what they often do is mixing some abilities uh, between the two. So one thing I like is that they added the power. So one plus one is two power here. And another thing is they added a bit of the toughness, but that, that's not really uh, translating perfectly. Then the first strike and menace from Kairi Zef is going to Baral and Kairi Zef. Um, I mean, Baral could also have those uh, keywords. He's pretty uh, uh, savage with his uh, weapons. Then we have uh, the ability about uh, instant and sorceries, which is from Baral. And then of course, the fact that uh, they make a monkey from Kairi Zef. So this is all pretty logical in the sense that they did this gimmick with enemies coming together um, instead of interplanner heroes coming together. Um, of course, could be noted, but it's still pretty cool. Um, then we have Fibblethip and Bor Borikmos. And the main thing I think here is that they both have one eye. <laughs> But there is uh, something else, because Fibblethip is always at the place where there is the most danger. And I feel like this is a great place for that at the top of this lion, cyclops, cruel, war boss, uh, who is fighting uh, <laughs> for actions while Fibblethip is uh, cheering him on. One thing that I do find interesting is that Fibblethip seems to have the ability to take Borborygmos with him on his journeys in getting lost and i think that is a little bit beautiful as well so what you see here is that for two mana you can put them uh, on the owner's library a third from the top um and uh i i think that is interesting because fubble thub seems to be a little bit clueless boborygmos isn't really clueless but he just doesn't follow too many rules for gruel warboss he does but for a normal person he doesn't really uh, so I feel like that is why he can uh, go on the, these journeys with Fubblethub weird by the way that he lives but <laughs> it's okay um, we'll, uh, we might get some explanation about that later um, then we have Jeru and, and Hazaret so not really enemies or not really, really clashing I feel like because Jeru is uh, very devoted to his gods and Hazaret uh, understands him really well. But uh, <laughs> uh, th this is another way to do it. Maybe with having people who are very logical to work together. So there isn't really a line in there. Uh, which is why I don't think we should look at the rivalry per se. It's just two cool people fighting together and we can look at why it's cool. Um, so this card, Jero and Hazareth, has taken the ability of the of Hazareth to sort of become stronger when uh, you have one or fewer cards in hand. So that's really cool. So this uh, thing that Hazareth needed to become a god goes away, maybe because of Jero's devotion to Jero, to uh, Hazareth, to Jero's devotion to Jero. I, I feel like he has that too. <laughs> and then when they attack, you may look at the top six cards of the, your library to reveal uh, to exile a legendary card um, that you may pay without paying its mana cost which is kind of like Jeru's original Jeru's uh, planeswalker ability here but a little bit toned down which I think is fair because this is such a big creature that might have vigilance from Jeru and haste from Hazret 
Um, other than that, cool that they are uh, fighting together, but this was uh, expected. Then we have Trana and Linfala. I um, must say I struggled a little bit because otherwise, uh, other than the fact that they are both sort of survivors of their species, maybe. Like Drana is the only one that can create new vampires and Linvala is one of the only angels uh, that hasn't blinded herself. Um, I don't really feel like there's much else there other than the fact that they don't really fit together. Where Linvala is the keeper of silence and Drana is like creating a lot of chaos. One other thing is here, I didn't really find why Drana, what Drana was adding to this card because she doesn't have vigilance, she does have flying but Linvala already had that. And then this, the other parts just seem like a Linvala card with the color black added to it. Oh, and, and they are a, a vampire, I guess. <laughs> but okay. Um, oh, sorry. Then we have Aaron and Kiara, which are pretty logical as well. They are both sort of good guys on uh, uh, New Capenna. And Errant is fighting with Halo in her gun. Maybe that is uh, one other thing. They're both fighting with Halo, maybe that's it. But other than that, I don't really see anything else. Well, they are from, from other houses, but that doesn't really make them rivals in this case because Errant has been pretty um, flexible <laughs> with going into other houses and becoming friends there. And Kiara, I feel like. It's the same, she isn't that devoted to the cabaret, so not sure. But let me know if you have a better idea. Um, then we have Maverin and Kalta, which are very much rivals, and it's weird that they even <laughs> built a house on the back of Kalta. Um, not sure why they uh, did that for Maverin Fane. Maybe they knew they would be good fighting partners, but I'm not really sure. <laughs> uh, I feel like the best part of this is the fact so they keep the body of Galta which I think is logical Maverick shouldn't be, really be adding too much physical prowess uh, from up there but then they make uh, this calling of dinosaurs from Galta of course and this making of vampires from Maverick uh, which seems like a very logical step um, yeah so <laughs> does make them a, a bit weaker that it is um, uh, uh, the, the, that these are not interlinked so it would have been stronger if um, the number of other attacking creatures would make a bigger dinosaur and vice versa because then you have like two strategies that go through each other now you have sort of two separate strategies where you want to make a big creature which Kalta already is of course uh, to make a dinosaur so that's probably what you usually do and then Maybe sometimes you use the second ability, but that's not really what Cult and Maverin are about right now. So that, that's what makes it a bit weird to me. Uh, it feels like Maverin Vane is uh, sticked on a card in, in here as well. Uh, which I understand. In design you don't want to give a card too much flexibility because that makes them very strong. Um, but you should, in this case, I feel like use both of the characters' powers. Um, then we have one... <laughs> Sometimes they are so juxtaposed that I feel like they should have explained it a little bit more. And they don't really do that here. So we have Hidetsugu devouring Chaos, who has uh, devoured a demon, an Oni, who is opposed to the Kami. And Kairi, the Swirling Sky, is a Kami. It is even the case that Hidetsugu has fought uh, Kairi's uh, predecessor, maybe even its previous form, depending on how you look at it. Uh, and killed it. <laughs> so, yeah, it's a little bit weird that uh, Kyrie is now back uh, and they are friends and stuff, I feel. But okay, definitely seeing how Hidetsugu could offer some restraint in the last uh, of the three books uh, from Kamigawa. But really wouldn't be able to do it now that he has sort of combined with the Oni. So, not sure where that is going. But okay. <laughs> then we have Inga and Esika. I thought the, the most mm, pressing thing that they have in common is the fact that they have both seen foreign clacks. So maybe that is why they came together to uh, fight as two gods here. And I also never noticed 
that Inga had her own raven as well. But now that I look at the art again, I'm like, yeah, seems logical. Maybe also because she is affiliated with uh, um, the old god with the crow. <laughs> I forget. Uh, but yeah, it seems logical for them to be together as they both have seen foreign clacks and should have both been killed by him. <laughs> then we have Kogla and Jidaro. Mm, which was a bit of a hard one as well. I do like the fact that they are... Uh, they have added on these crystals. So the Ikoria crystals. So they keep evolving. So it would be a bit weird if they were still exactly the same. I think that is a really cool part about Ikoria as well. Which is that every time we see these characters they probably will have become stronger that will, will never really end uh, but i think the biggest difference between these two is that gogla is a bonded creature so we don't see her here but he has a bonder uh, that you can see in this previous art and yidaro is a really free creature that doesn't really like sounds at all whenever he hears a sound he really instantly sprints off and attacks him them that's why he has haste <laughs> uh, which i thought was really funny but uh, he also has the power to obliterate enemies himself so i don't feel like they really need to be together <laughs> at all but um yeah it's a it's a funny card where we see of course kogla smashing a fraction into the back of jidaro i think that is uh, the most fun part here <laughs> Then we have Rankle and Torbran, uh, which is, I guess, a callback, or not really a callback, but like showing what happened in the story or something. Rankle, of course, being uh, very much a trickster and Thorbrand being a very stern guy that makes it a very fun pair. Um, more than that, I feel like this is a really strong card. So we have the Flying and Haste from Rankle, and then we have First Strike as well which I don't really see here, but then whenever they deal combat damage to a player or battle, choose any number. Each player creates a treasure token. So each player, of course, the thing that Rankle always does. Uh, each player sacrifices a creature, also very Rankle-like. And then coming exactly from Thorbran, if a source would deal damage to a player or battle this turn, it deals that much damage plus two instead. And that seems weird at first, but now you understand why there is first strike on this card because Ranko and Torbrand strike first, and everything that comes after deals to extra damage. So I feel like that is a good design part there. You might say, where's the first strike coming from? Uh, but that makes it logical again. So I feel like that is interesting. Then we have Thalia and the Gitrock monster, the monster that has never been beaten before and is probably hypnotized over 20 villages by now, if we are very logical about it, because <laughs> he had done one in like two years and we are 20 further so maybe 10 10 villages <laughs> but okay he gives it death touch and all those land abilities so you may play an additional land on each of your turns for four mana that's really impressive you get a four four with first strike death touch which is the best combination of keywords almost ever um but you may also play additional lands and then creatures and non-basic lands you, your opponents control enter the battlefield tap I feel like they just made this to make a really good card. Absurd, almost. For just one mana more, you get Thalia, literally, because it's first strike, it's bigger, it says this, creatures and non-basic lands, your opponent's control, enter the battlefield tap. Exactly, Thalia. And I feel... <laughs> is a of course smaller version but with first strike almost of the gitrock monster <laughs> but the, of course it is a lot weaker in, the, in this ability where the gitrock monster said whenever one or more land cards are put into your graveyard from anywhere draw a card this says whenever it attacks sacrifice a creature or land then draw a card so that's a way weaker of course but i feel like such an upgraded thalia is yeah well really good <laughs> Um, and that they wanted to combine this with the added value of it being Thalia and the Gidrock monster which are two favorites for a lot of people as characters so that's basically 
how they put a lot of value on just one card. I feel like that is mostly what this one is for. Uh, it doesn't seem logical in any other sense other than it being goofy that they are together. Uh, then Yargo and Miltani, which weirdly enough does make a lot of sense. Uh, we double the power and toughness of Yargo, which I think is a, is a funny callback to just a big guy who, with a lot of flavor text. Um, by sort of adding a tree onto it. <laughs> Uh, which seems weird, but is actually very logical that they are, they've made it like this uh, in the art. I think that's beautiful because... Um, Yar so Multani is, of course, sort of the soul, or as the previous card says, the avatar of Yavimaya. And Yavimaya and... Um, what's it called? I thought it said that Urborg <laughs> have been sort of mingling together uh, to create more like a... Golgari colored swamp like piece of life that is erupting back from death and the fact that they are together sort of tells me that these two lands have started to bond more and I feel like this one is very logical and like promises a lot for the future instead of making me feel like there's more that needs to be explained but <laughs> maybe you guys can do that too uh, one other thing I like about this too is that they are throwing a seed into the air. I feel like that's a beautiful piece where they're like, yeah, we know the importance of seed and new life. We don't want that sprouting on our lands. And the uh, also, but uh, ribbit, of course, coming from the fact that Yargle is a frog, <laughs> um, which I think is funny. Too. Um, I feel like last one, but I'm no, it's not the last one. Uh, but we have Simone and Dina, who have perfectly added each other's color, sort of showing why green is the intermingling part of their combination. And we actually saw one moment of them working really well together in the story as well, where Dina can create any sort of plant, can use a lot of power that she gets from her pests, and then Simone can double that and double that and keep on doubling that until they have like infinite power, which is a very cool combination so from one piece of life they can create a lot more and then we see the ability of uh, drawing your second card and then draining so drawing a lot of cards from simone and draining from dina and then sacrificing a creature which is from dina again to draw a card and you may put the land card from your hand onto the battlefield depth which is sort of simone's thing of expanding knowledge and land i guess from blue and green if you control eight or more lands which is i think a beautiful thing because simone also says it this if you control eight or more lands draw two cards instead here it says if you do control eight or more lands repeat this process once i feel like this is a beautiful combination of them working together as they should uh, then lastly i didn't even click there <laughs> um no not lastly again i keep tricking you i don't know why i'm doing that um but yeah i switch these around i see now um, and I know why, because look at these colors. This is uh, red, white, and black, which is sort of logical because again, we are combining the colors of these characters. But before we have seen that you don't really have to do that. But uh, in a bit, we will see a combination of, of characters that should have gotten these colors. Um, we have Croxa and Kunaros, uh, where Croxa is the guy that eats everything. And when he would once escape, he would uh, apparently have eaten all of Melitis that was uh, set in uh, in faith, set in stone, um, but uh, he didn't. <laughs> but okay, um, they have Vigilance, Menace and Lifelink from Kunaros. And then whenever they enter the battlefield or attack, which is sort of Croxas thing here, you may exile five cards from your graveyard when you do return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. And this feels really weird. Um, I understand that they are both angry creatures in the in the honor world now but Croxa is a guy that tries to escape and Gunnaros is a guy that tries to stop anyone from escaping it says so in his flavor uh, he barks when there's an attempt to escape the underworld and then he eats them <laughs> whoever tries to escape and now they help other creatures escaping doesn't seem logical okay now there is the last one like i said i feel like this one 
uh, should have been the combination of Sergo and Culligan. Would have been more logical and more cool, I feel like. Um, but he is paired with Ojitai, giving them haste from Zergo and flying from Ojutai, he can't really fly, <laughs> even though he's fast. <laughs> um, has Hexproof, which comes from uh, Ojutai again, and then whenever, and then a dragon ability, <laughs> which is uh, a bit weird. I'm not going to make a dragon joke here, but you can do it if you want to do it against me. I'm saying dragon a lot, so go ahead. Um, but in the alternate version, where uh, I feel like we see Zergo here as well because he is a bit small comparing to the Helm Smasher version of him. But in the converted version, we see Zergo becomes a Bell Striker for the dragons instead of someone who fights against them. And he works under the Dragon Lord Culligan. So it doesn't make sense if we are looking at that version of the story to see Zergo and Ojitai working together because Zergo wouldn't work under Ojitai, he could just as well work under Culligan. Then the other option would be him being the Helm Smasher where he would be trying to defeat the dragons. Where yeah, maybe it would be logical to fight on a dragon but probably not because their abilities really don't work to get well together in the story, I mean. <clears throat> uh, being just a guy who fights really well and is really fast um, and becomes stronger from battle is better off being on the ground himself fighting people like what's his sword going to do from up here on a dragon that is supposed to use like yeah fighting prowess and a bit of magic that's not logical it's not, not even lo logical for him to write on Colligan strategically speaking so yeah really stomped on this one <laughs> uh, but I feel like they just wanted a Jeskai combination and that part I can understand, but I feel like if they would be put in this slot with uh, the, uh, Zergo's own colors, or maybe uh, the Dragon Lord would be uh, put together with someone from Jeskai, which I, I think would have been fine. You could have just put someone on there who is pretty speedy from the from the Jeskai uh, uh, group tribe. Um, that would be more logical, but okay. <laughs> um, I want to thank you for watching. If you want any deeper dives on one of these cards there's a lot of to say still uh, so we could do that please tell me which one is your favorite um, and otherwise i want to uh, wish you a very nice day